Hi kids! I'm delighted I get to spend some time with you today reading. There are a couple things I want you to know first. One is, I'm going to read this story in parts. You're going to need to learn how to stop the video so you can go run around and play for a few minutes because it's going to be a little bit of a long story, especially because we're going to stop and talk about it. So. If your parents are right there nearby, would you ask them to please tell you how to stop the video and start it again? Okay. Now here's another thing you need to know. In order to do a really fun job of pretending that we are in class, it's going to help you if you have something to talk to like a stuffy or somebody to talk to maybe a brother or sister, maybe your mom or dad. And if you don't have anybody like that, that's okay. You can just close your eyes and think. So this would be a good time to stop the video because now you know how to do it, right? And go find somebody or find a stuffy or just start it up again in just a moment and we'll start the story. Okay, here we go. I want you, first of all, to look at this cover of the story and think, is this probably a fiction or a nonfiction book? Think about the clues that would give you that information. So would it be, would the, it be a photograph or an illustration if it was a nonfiction book? Would it be a photograph or a drawing or illustration if it is a fiction book? Okay, here we go. So what do you think it is? I'm sure you've guessed correctly. That's right. There's a photograph, so that means it is a nonfiction book. The reason this book was written is to give you some information about this. And what do you suppose this is? you can get a really good idea by reading the words in the title, right? In fact, it's going to tell you. The, the topic of this story is a harbor seal up grows up. So you could recognize that word. I bet you could read it before I even said it. And that one too for sure. So, A Harbor Seal Pup Grows Up is the title, and so now you know that this is all about, right, harbor seals, and I bet you have a pretty good idea of what pup means. If something is not grown up yet, it's probably a what? A baby, right? Or a young animal, right? All right, so let's look down at the bottom because you know often at the bottom we find who either drew the photo, the pictures or took the photographs and who wrote the story. And in this case, we have Joan Hewitt. That's the person that wrote the story. And the photographs were by Richard Hewitt. Now, what do you suppose that means about these two people, that they have the same last name? Yep, I agree they're probably in the same family. So now that we know that it's a nonfiction story and we know the title, we know what it's about, and we know who helped us to learn to get to have this book, we're going to read it. And remember, in a few minutes, you can stop the video. You can stop the video anytime and go run around and play. I don't even have to tell you. And then come back, of course. Okay, here we go. Oh, here's the title page. Remember on the title page we have the title. And what else do we have? Who wrote and photographed, in this case, the book. And we have who made the book. And in this case, the people that put the book together. Not the people that wrote it, but the people who put it together. The company. That's Developmental Studies Center actually put this book together, made it into actually a book. And you know what's on this page, what that says? 
at your school, Sacagawea Elementary. It belongs to Sacagawea. So on this first page, we have the setting. We have a photograph of the setting, and I want you to think, what is the setting? The setting is where the story takes place. What do you see? Right. This better. There we go. Uh-huh. So we see, right, waves crashing on the what? The beach, right? The beach. And what do we see? Do you suppose those are harbor seals? I'm guessing that you probably thought that in your very smart brain. And you have down here, harbor seal. And on this side, we have by the ocean. Now I wonder, do you think that the person that wrote this title did a good job? Does the title match the photograph? Okay, let's look here at the, the photograph. Here we have a photo of a baby seal pup and her mother. And you can't see really her mother very well, but that is her mother. And you can you can read some of the words. Maybe you can read all of them. Maybe you can pick out a few. Whatever you're doing right now is just fine. You can stop the video right now if you want to and read the whole thing. The harbor seal pup is two weeks old. Her name is Sydney. Sydney stays close to her mother. She drinks her mother's milk. Now I want to tell you something about that. If an animal drinks her mother's milk or his mother's milk, what do you suppose that means? There's a word for that. The fact that the kind of animal that drinks from their mother and the word is mammal. And I bet you know some animals that drink milk from their mother can think about what those would be. In fact, if you want to stop right now, you can stop and think and tell somebody, what mammal do you know of? Do you think a spider is a mammal? Mammal? Do you think a lizard is a mammal? Do you think a kitten is a mammal? Okay, here we go. And again, if you want to stop the video and read it, you certainly are welcome to do that. In fact, I'd love that. Here we go. Waves crash on the rocky beach. Harbor seal families lie in the warm sun. Think about if you've ever done that. Lay down by the ocean in the warm sun. If you have, you can do this. Sydney and her mother lie in the sun too. Ever laid in the sun with your mom? What do you suppose your mother's doing? Sydney's mother gets hungry. She dives in the water to catch fish. Now, do you suppose she's going to feed those fish to Sydney? Or do you think Sydney is old enough for fish? The water is too cold for Sydney. So, Sydney stays on the shore. Now, think, what do you suppose? shore means. Yeah, I bet you know it means the beach. Mm -hmm. The seal pup waits for her mother. She waits for three days. Three days! She's very hungry. Think how you would feel if you didn't eat for three days. Mm. People notice the seal pup. So, believe me, 
There are people around and she's not totally alone. But in this story, it says she is alone because it means that she doesn't have her mother with her. But I can see that there are some whiskers in the background. See those whiskers? So I think this means that there are probably other seals around. Yep, just means her mom isn't there. Will her mother come back? So I want you to stop and think, what might you be wondering right now? You can stop if you want to, stop the video. Are you wondering where her mother is? So, the next day, the pup is still alone. In other words, there are no, her mother isn't there. The people call for help. Clearly, she isn't totally alone. Sydney is rescued. Now, you might wonder why she's in a cage. Would you feel rescued if you were in a cage? <laughs> How do you suppose she feels right now? You can stop and turn and tell somebody if you can, or just think about it, or tell your stuffy. Okay, we have a new chapter now. The title of the chapter is Nursed Back to Health. So if something needs to be nursed back to health, is that animal or that person healthy right now? Sydney is brought to a sea, now here's the word we were talking about before, a sea mammal center. Remember, mammal means an animal that drinks from her mother's milk or drinks her mother's milk or his mother's milk. So she is in a sea mammal center, a place that takes care of sea mammals from the ocean. Can you read some of the words? Again, you can stop the video if you want to, to really read this story. I wish I could put my finger under each word. If I had another hand, I would, but I don't. A scientist named Peter is in charge. Now, in charge means, what do you suppose? Yeah, the boss. A boss could be a man or a woman, of course. Peter takes care of young seals. He lifts the thin pup from her cage. See, she's gotten skinny because she hasn't wet, right? She hasn't eaten. Now notice something about this. Here she was in a cage. Why do you suppose she was in a cage? And here he's wearing gloves. Do you have an idea, a thought about why he would be wearing gloves? Something I know about animals is that when they're frightened, sometimes they bite because they feel like they need to protect themselves. So if she tried to bite that person, it wasn't because she was mean. It was just because she was afraid. Now let's look at this right here and think about what might this have inside of it, this container. Remember container? That was one of our vocabulary words. And see the ho this hose coming down? Where is it going? What do you suppose might be in here? Do you think she's probably drinking? Do you think she might be drinking a chocolate milkshake? Yeah? Would that be good? Do you think she'd like that? Sydney is weak from hunger. She knows, or Peter knows just what to do. He puts a tube in Sydney's mouth. Now I want you to stop and stop the video if you can and think about what has happened in this story so far. And you can tell somebody about it or just think. Okay, here we go.
Then Nicole pumps a drink into Sydney's stomach. The drink is like a mother seal's milk. So this might be a really good time to get up and move around, stretch, because we've been reading for a while now and thinking about things. You've been working hard. Are you ready to come back and start the story again? Here we go. I think this is pretty adorable. What do you recognize there? What have you seen that's just like this? Is there something like this in your house? Sydney is full. She is also very tired. She falls asleep. I wonder if you've ever fallen asleep after you had a nice meal. On Thanksgiving, I always do, because I'm so full. When Sydney wakes up, her eyes are bright. She looks around. And I think this one, it, this one always makes me want to go, oh, so cute. Is that the way you feel when you look at this? Do you have that cuteness feeling? I think when animals are, when animals are happy and awake and alert, especially baby animals. They can be really adorable. I had to get that hair out of my eyes. It was bugging me. So when Sydney wakes up, her eyes are bright and she looks around. Now, here we go. This is Peter. What do you suppose Peter's job is? What would he be called? Do you remember that story we had before? Remember what this is called? Okay. He's listening to her heart and lungs. Think about, have you ever had somebody listen to your heart and lungs that was wearing something like this? Do you know what it's called? A stethoscope, right? Peter examines the pup. Her heartbeat is normal. Examines means, what do you suppose? Looks at her, listens to her. Uh -huh. She uh, so as her temperature is normal. She is healthy. Yay. Sydney has a full set of teeth. Did you have a full set of teeth when you were very, very, very young, when you were just born just a few weeks ago? That means she is at least three weeks old. Sydney is small for her age. If you have a baby in your house, you know that babies don't get all of their teeth right away. So that's how baby seal, harbor seal pups are different from baby humans. Remember, you can stop the video and read this if you want. or just look at the cute picture. Sydney gets her milk, her drink, three times a day. She becomes stronger. Using her flippers, she scoots around. Now stop and think a minute. What has happened in the story so far? That's one thing you remember. Now, here's something you're gonna recognize. Have you ever swum in something like this? How are you in Sydney alike? A child's plastic pool becomes Sydney's playpen. She likes the water. She swims faster and faster. I bet she's swimming around in circles. We're getting close to the end here. Now, what do you suppose might happen next? What else might Sydney need? She's been drinking something like milk for a while now. You think she's ready for something else? Solid food, maybe? Nicole shows Sydney a fish. Does she want it? Do you suppose she's eating it? Sydney does not want it. 
Nicole does not give up. Day after day, she wiggles a fish in front of Sydney. Then one day, the pup swallows it. You see her teeth? Finally, she's ready for solid food. Before long, Sydney wants to eat fish. She waits for her bucket of fish in the morning. The pup is gaining weight. She no longer needs her healthy drink. Not her milkshake. Right? So cute. You think so? I love this story. She's looking right at you, it looks like, doesn't it? Sydney is five weeks old. She has a thick layer of fat. The fat will keep her warm in cold water. Warm, the fat will keep her warm in cold water. Why do you suppose that is? You can stop and think. Why would fat keep her warm? I'm wondering if you're thinking what I'm thinking, is that fat can be like a warm blanket on the inside, underneath the skin. Does that kind of make sense? <laughs> Sydney is ready, can you read that with me? To be on her own. <gasps> do you suppose we're coming to the near the end? What do you suppose is going to happen next? Close your eyes and think. And you can turn and tell somebody, or yourself, or your stuffy, what do you suppose will happen next? You think they're just gonna leave her there in the room all by herself because she's ready to be on her own? Here's the answer. In the title, re Re means do it again, turning, you know that word, to, and that word, the, ocean. And what do you suppose this is? And what's around it? Returning to the ocean. Peter puts the pup in a carrying case. They carry Sydney onto a boat. Sydney is excited by the ocean's salty smell. Do you suppose she remembers that smell? She shakes the case. Now, I don't know about you, but I have seen places like this myself. There's a place called the San Juan Islands, and maybe some of you have been there, that have rocky cliffs like this. And there are harbor seals. I'm pretty sure they're called harbor seals but there are seals that live there. I wonder if this is the San Juan Islands. The boat heads toward an island. When they're almost there, the boat stops. What do you suppose they're gonna do? Right, it is time to say goodbye. Now, before we go on, I want you to think, what do you remember so far that happened? What's one thing that happened in the book? Did you think about it? Okay, here we go. A scientist tips the case. That is what tip means. Good luck, little one, she says. It's so cute. Good luck, little one. Now think about what you think is going to happen next. I'm wondering if Sydney will find anybody like her or if she'll swim around and around. What do you suppose will happen? Do you suppose she's going to look for people for many days or do you think she'll find somebody like, like her right away? Do you think she'll find any other Harbor seals 
like her. Sydney slips into the water. Do you think she's smiling? She will find other seals. She will. How do you suppose she's going to eat? Yep. She will catch fish. Imagine how a, a seal would catch fish. Would they use a fishing pole? Nah. Sydney will grow up in her ocean home. Yay! And that is the end of the story. Here's some more information. So, you have done a lot of good things today. You've thought about what will happen next. You've thought about what had happened before. You wondered things. You answered your own questions. You thought about whether it was a fiction or nonfiction book. And you even worked on reading words. I'm really, really proud of you. I'm really happy for you. And I hope you're happy for yourselves. And I'm looking forward to reading you another story really soon. You take good care of yourselves. I wish I could see you in person. Take care. Bye-bye.